welcome to Topper Talk, your number one Western Kentucky Athletics podcast. I'm your host, Stephen Moffitt, and I'm joined by co-host Tyler Bailey. Hilltopper Nation, whether it's happening on the hill or on the road, grab those red towels, stand up and cheer, because it's up next on Topper Talk. All right, welcome back, and thank you for downloading and listening to another episode of the Topper Talk podcast, the official podcast of the Red Towel Trust Collective. And we are a member of the College Huddle podcast community. If you're not already doing so, give us a follow on all the social medias. And another thing you can do to help us out, whatever platform you're listening on, give us a rate, a review, leave a comment, drop a like. Uh, you know, we'd love to hear your feedback on how we're doing. You know, help us out with the algorithm. Uh, and as always, this episode is brought to you by the Fireman Moving Company. The Fireman Moving Company is the official moving company of WKU Athletics. Not only can they be trusted to move all the coaches in and out of Western, but they can move you anywhere nationwide. The Fireman Moving Company is owned and operated by Fireman and is founded by WKU alumni. If you're looking to move sometime soon, give them a call at 270-791-1755 and get yourself a free quote. Let the pros do it. They'll get you moved fast and efficient um, and just make your life easier, I promise you. Got Tyler here with me, man. We're continuing the uh, position series breakdown, man. You ready to dive in? Yeah, man, day's going to be a good one. Let's get into it and let's unpack these players that we're going to be talking about. But before we do that, we have to dive into our red towel wrap up, which is brought to you by Trent Betting Company and catches us up on all the athletic news that we've missed since we last recorded. So let's get a word from Trent Betting. Don't forget your headboards, pillows, and your sheets. We got everything you need for a good night's sleep. Number one on the same check, best of Molin Green. All right, all right, all right. Twins, fool, queen and king, mattresses for anything. Come and pick it out and we can bring it to your house. Have you sleeping real good before the weekend's out? Trim Trim Betty, Trim Betty, Trim Betty. It's just like, it's just like a mattress store. Hey, hey. And also, I'm not going to lie, uh, a few years ago, I got went to Trent Bed and I built my own pillows, right? Because I had that pillow build machine there. Dude, I put some uh, some uh, down, some uh, I guess some down uh, filling in them, in them pillows. Still sleep on them to the day. They're so comfy. But let's get into the Red Tower wrap-up. Uh, starting off, WKU baseball pitcher Jacob Bimby was drafted in the MLB draft by the Pirates in the 11th round, pick 364. Uh, closer Mason Burns was selected by the Cardinals in the 14th round, pick 411th, and pitcher Grant Burleson selected by the Astros in the 18th round, pick 553. Congrats to our new, newest Pro Tops. Yeah, three Hilltoppers uh, drafted in the Major League Baseball draft. Um, we had the most selections in Conference USA, which I just think is a, a tribute to the team and the turnaround that Coach Rarden and staff have had in just two years. Uh, so, obviously, congratulations to those guys, and I'm looking forward to watching them as they continue their pro careers and obviously, you know, continue to watch what that baseball program does as they're still on the rise. Uh, moving on, WKU volleyball coach Jenna Otek signed with the Grand Rapids Rise of the Professional Volleyball League. Congratulations, Jenna. Yeah, so she's now teammates with uh, Paige Briggs Romine, who I think we announced one of our last couple episodes had signed with them um, here in the off season. So uh, Coach Jenna Otek had been with us for a couple years now. Um, I guess she got the itch to play professionally. She had been coaching for a few years now. She came from Purdue. Um, she was a two-time All-American there at Purdue. So she was a pretty good libero uh, when she was playing, and she's not very far removed from her playing days. So. She decided to give it a try. I think that is going to be it for her coaching days for now. Uh, I don't think she can do both, um, but we look forward to watching and supporting whatever she does uh, in the professional volleyball league. Uh, moving on to softball, WKU softball announced the addition of Lindsay Warwick as their director of operations. Welcome to the Hill, uh, Lindsay. Yeah, it looks like a good hire. Uh, she came from Indiana University from what I saw. Um you know, she gave us a follow immediately when we uh, tagged her and said congratulations and welcome to the Hill. So congratulations to her and welcome to the Hill, Lindsay. Uh, the WKU basketball versus Jackson State date was revealed as being played on November 20th by Jackson State's uh, X account. 
Yeah, the WKU basketball schedule is just, I mean, it seems like every day there's another game coming out. Um, we're getting real close to having a full non-conference schedule uh, completed, and the conference schedule's already been released. So, you know, by the end of this month or maybe early August, it feels like we're going to have that full schedule and kind of know what that looks like. The roster is is done. You know, we're looking at some um, 2025 commitments coming up here soon. So really excited for the basketball schedule and how that's shaping up. Uh, the WKU football game at Sam Houston on 10-16 uh, has been changed to a 6 p.m. kickoff instead of a 7 p.m. kickoff. Hey, one hour earlier for us uh, old heads here that want to get to bed early or somebody that's going to have a newborn at home or has to be up at 3 o'clock every morning. I'm sure Tyler's not mad that the game's going to start at 6, be over by 9-ish or so. So, you know, might, might be able to get some sleep with the baby and with work at, you know, 3 a.m. the next day. So, uh, good move, I think. Oh, I agree with you. It's a great move. Uh, hopefully, I get some sleep because I'm probably going to be losing some. Uh, WK basketball got a commitment in the class of 2025 from Armello Boone. He is a 6'3 guard from Lexington, Kentucky. Yeah, he looks like a really good player. Um, you know, when we shared his commitment, you know, the first thing I naturally did was went looking for some clips, some highlights. Uh, you know, found some of his AAU playing clips, and he's a, a really athletic, plays above the rim. He's aggressive, uh, looks to be a good defender, good scorer. Um, and obviously he has another year high school ball ahead of him, and then he'll be on the hill this time next year. So really excited for that first commitment in the 25 class. Congratulations, Armello. And that concludes the Red Tower Wrap-Up, brought to you by the Trent Bedding Company, where if you want good pillows, go there. Moth, back to you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, really good Red Tail wrap-up. A lot of good news and a lot of good information there. Uh, but we are continuing the 2024 WKU football position series breakdown. Uh, now we're going to move on to the wide receiver and tight end position group. We're just going to lump those in together one as one receiver group, basically, we're going to call it. Now, they are ranked the number one position group in Conference USA by Phil Steele. They are coached by first-year uh, wide receiver coach Zach Mizell. And we have to talk about the losses to this unit. And the first one we have to talk about, um, you know, we have to start here, is Malachi Corley. You know, friend of the podcast, you know, came on and did an interview with us before the bowl game there. Um, the Yak King, uh, you know, was definitely just an impact all-time legendary type of player here at Western Kentucky. He was drafted by the Jets in the NFL draft in the third round. He was picked number 65, which I believe was the second highest ever WKU player drafted uh, behind only Forrest Lamp. He finished his WKU career with 259 receptions for 3,035 yards with 29 touchdowns. He was our all-time receptions leader and his second all-time in receiving touchdowns. It's easy to say he's a WKU GOAT. Um, you know, he did all that in three seasons. You know, he still had another season of eligibility. He could have come back and just really iced all those records. He would have obliterated his receptions record. You know, if he's having 80, 90 receptions a year uh, and the touchdowns, he's 10 plus a year automatic. So he's catching Taewon Taylor. I would, I would, you know, beg to uh, bet that he was going to catch up with Taewon if he played another year of his eligibility. So, um, obviously, he's going to be a hard one to replace. Um, he demanded a lot of attention from the defense. Um, he was that go-to receiver, that tough, big body, extra yards. Um, you know, if he got the ball in his hands, he was going to make a big play. So, Tyler, before we talk about the other guys that we lost, we have to pay our respects to Malachi Corley and what he meant to this team, this program, in Western Kentucky and what his loss is going to be felt uh, for this coming season. I mean, his loss is going to be felt bad. Um, you know, he he was a great player, and he was an even greater dude. Uh, you know, I met him last uh, – uh, before the season started at the uh, – at that uh, football event. Um, and, dude, you know, he was such a nice nice guy, uh, super chill. Uh, but as soon as he put them helmet and pads on, <laughs> and it was all business. I think one of my – you know, and he had so many highlight plays. Uh, especially from this past season, I think it was against La Tech, 
where he caught the ball kind of uh, on the flats, just trucked over dude, sent him, sent him down to the dirt. His mama probably disowned him that night. And uh, he just took it to pay dirt. And the funny thing was, if you looked from the camera angles, there was a LaTeX defender running in front of him, uh, didn't turn his head to look and see no, no play on the ball, just complete obliv completely oblivious to what was happening. And, uh, like, dude, Malachi Corley was that guy. Uh, he had the dog in him. He was built different. Um, and it, his loss, you know, is, is going to be felt. You know, being just doing that in three years, it's, it's amazing. Uh, very, very talented. I can't wait to see what he does for the New York Jets uh, on Sundays because um, I'm definitely going to be watching. And, uh, man, I mean, that, that, that was – I don't want to say a once in a generational talent here, but the dude was great. I mean, the dude's going to have his jersey retired um, up on the side of, of Houch and Smith Stadium here in a few years. I guarantee it. Well, we talked about it earlier um, with the loyalty that Quintavious Leslie showed. I mean, Malachi Corley had his options before his last year here. He could have went and played at a number of P5 schools, you know, he could have went and played anywhere almost in the SEC. He had offers. He had options. Um, caught tampering. Caught whatever you want to call it because he never officially entered the transfer portal. But he had uh, teams on his line saying, hey, come play for us just because they saw the type of player that he was. Um, you talk about his highlight tapes, man. I remember that game versus FAU um, when we beat him at the end of the season and got Willie Taggart fired, unfortunately for him. But, you know, Malachi was uh, going in for a touchdown, and he had a clear path. He could have just walked into the end zone, just high step. You know, Dion high stepped into there. But there was an FAU defender coming. He decided to veer his path, lower his shoulder, and just obliterate this guy for no reason. You know, he just seeks out contact, seeks out that physicality. Um, you know, he was kind of one of those hot names of the NFL draft when it was coming up. You know, he could have went anywhere from the third round to the first round to the third round. Uh, you know, Steve Smith called him the steal of the draft. Um, you know, now he's in camp. You know, he's he already has a close relationship with Aaron Rodgers, staying in his guest house, just trying to soak up everything he can um, on a really young and talented New York Jets offense that, you know, if Aaron Rodgers can stay healthy, um, Malachi is going to get an opportunity to, just make a name for himself in the NFL immediately. Um, and I think one of his first games of the season is at the Tennessee Titans. So if you're listening and you want to go see him, I think like week one or week two, they play in Nashville. So um, I plan on being there. I want to see him live, you know, and just get to watch him as a pro. Cause I, I really appreciate what he did here. Um, his loyalty to the program and just his legendary status. And like you said, just how great a guy he was. I mean, he was the most humble and approachable um, and just kind person that you could ever just walk up to and just have a conversation about. And he just also happened to be really freaking good at football and really not somebody you want to line up against and, and try to tackle. Um, but, yeah, we're definitely going to miss Malachi Corley, uh, all-time great, uh, and definitely looking forward to watching him in the pros. Uh, another player we lost, Jimmy Holiday. He transferred to Louisiana Tech. We also lost Craig Burt. He exhausted his eligibility. Uh, we lost Blue Smith. He has transferred and has not announced his new destination. We lost Xavion Capers, who's transferred to Gardner-Webb. Then we also lost Josh Stearns, a uh, younger brother of Jareth. He transferred to Gardner-Webb and then later uh, announced his retirement from football. He is done playing. Um, you know, hate that for him. I hope all is well in his world. Um, but Tyler, what about the rest of these guys uh, that we've lost and just that impact that we're going to feel with them being gone? Uh, you know, Jimmy Holiday uh, came up here from UT. He was actually the fourth uh, leading receiver on the team. He had uh, 20 catches, 326 yards, uh, average 16.3 yards per catch. 326, yeah. Uh, second touchdown or two touchdowns, and his longest was uh, 39. 
uh, he's definitely going to be felt because, you know, he was kind of take the pre- – you know, if um, if Malachi was ha- was being pressured and we knew he was every single game, uh, Jimmy would come in there and he would take some pressure off of him. Uh, you know, you look at Craig Burt, he transferred out, came back. He had a he had an all right season. Um, you know, I was glad to see him come back. You know, just added more experience into the wide receiver room. Uh, Blue Smith, I was expecting more of him, uh, and he kind of kind of made himself look bad at the Ohio State game whenever he just decided to headbutt a defensive player for no reason whatsoever. Uh, and you know, he didn't really see much playing time after that. Uh, but I was high, I was high on him because of his height. Like he was like what six 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 seven, uh, good size good size guy. Uh, and yeah, you know, he just never really panned out. And then you had uh, Capers. You know, he came up from Auburn, I believe. Uh, he just he never panned out neither. Uh, he didn't really do nothing. So you had two P five guys come in. Um, the last season we thought or I thought at least that they was going to do something. It just didn't never really worked out for him. And uh, Josh Stearns, you know, I thought he was going to follow in his brother's footsteps and be, you know, a, uh, a, a ball magnet. Um, but, you know, he, he retired. Uh, like you said, I hope everything's well with him. Uh, I hope me- medically he's all right. Um, but no, I, I think one – at, at least two of the transfers um, would have been nice to have back. Uh, Craig Burt, you know, he he used up all his eligibility, so he, he wasn't coming back whatsoever. But to see Jimmy uh, Holiday transfer down to La Tech, that kind of kind of intrigues me a little bit. Um, I'm glad we'll be seeing him this year in football. I hope the best for him. I hope he's I hope he's happy down there and enjoys it. But at the end of the day, I hope we just uh, I hope we just embarrass him. I hope our defense is able to hold him to uh, very minimal uh, yardage and, and receptions, and we just walk away with the victory. Yeah, tops by 90. Sorry, Jimmy Holiday. Um, let's talk about some of the guys we added to the roster for the wide receivers and tight end. First off, we added wide receiver Justin Brown. He's a transfer from Georgia Tech. He's number 22. He's a six foot, 186 pound redshirt freshman. We added wide receiver Bryce Childress. He's a transfer from Troy. He's number 19. He's a 5'9", 179-pound senior. We added wide receiver Keyshawn Johnson. He's a transfer from Alabama State. He's number 13. He's a 6'2", 216-pound senior. We added wide receiver Demick Starling. He's a transfer from Virginia. He's number 6. He's a 6'192", pound redshirt junior. We added wide receiver Damari Jefferson. He's a high school signee. He's number 24. He's a five foot nine, 173 pound freshman. We added Cameron Flowers. He's also a high school signee. He's number 80. He's a five foot 11, 169 pound freshman. Then we added Jalen Hampton, also a high school signee. He's number 83. He is a six foot one, 197 pound freshman. And then we added tight end CJ Kiss who is a transfer from Notre Dame College. No, not to Notre Dame up in Indiana, not that one. Notre Dame College. Um, he is number 89. He is a six foot four, 239 239-pound redshirt junior. So, Tyler, tell me about some of these guys we added. What are you expecting from them to add to the team in 2024? Well, you know, with Justin Brown, he uh, he's a transfer from Georgia Tech. Uh, you know, he didn't see no playing time there, but as a high school senior, uh, he was rated the number 14th prospect in his class by rivals and 24-7 sports. Uh, and he also, in, in his senior year, caught 74 passes for 1,229 yards and 18 touchdowns. And he also rushed for 214 yards and five touchdowns uh, on 28 carries. So, you know, he could he could come in and kind of do what uh, – what Malachi did by catching the ball, you know, on the, on, on, on the jet, um, uh, Bryce Childress, he also played it at New Mexico state as well. Uh, and that's where I, I got these numbers from. He, uh, during his time, time there, he caught 27 passes, 432 yards and two touchdowns. 
Uh, Keyshawn Johnson, like you said, he played Alabama State. Uh, there he played in 28 games and caught 104 passes and got 1,487 yards with 11 touchdowns. Uh, you know, I, I think that that number may be wrong, but I'm intrigued by it. Uh, Demeek Starlin, he played at Virginia during his career there, and uh, while he was there, he played in 28 games with 11 receptions for 188 yards and two touchdowns. Um, last season, uh, he only played in two games, though. Cameron Flowers, he was a three-star recruit by 24-7 sports rivals and on three. And his senior year, he caught 31 passes for 684 yards and 10 touchdowns. And as the aforementioned C.J. Kiss from Notre Dame College, uh, he didn't play in 2023, uh, could have been injured or for whatever reason he didn't play. But in 2022, he did play in 12 games, and he was one of the top targets on the team in the red zone. Uh, he had four touchdowns and caught 20 passes for 198 yards. Uh, I mean, you look at Damari J Jefferson. Uh, he was a freshman at Oak Grove High School in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. He is considered a two-star prospect and had 42 catches for 700 yards and 11 touchdowns. Um, you know, I think we have some good guys on that that we've recruited or at least got transfers, and uh, I think they're going they're going to come in. They're going to add too. Uh, I kind of stopped saying that, uh, but uh, I feel like I feel like they're going to do good here. Uh, you know, they come into a offense that uh, can be very pass heavy. Uh, and, you know, if you got good hands and you know you, you can catch the ball, you're going to make uh, make your hay here uh, because our quarterbacks and our coaches will get you the ball. Uh, you you just got to be sure you catch it because the last season i know we had some some wide receivers that couldn't and didn't uh for for a multiple of reasons may have just been overpass underpass what have you but uh i think our our transfers and our freshman signees are definitely going to help us out here yeah we definitely added some good pieces uh to this roster um to fill in the void some of the guys we left i know we'll be talking about a couple of these guys in here in just a minute but we're also going to jump in and talk about some of the other guys that are also still on the roster. Now, these aren't guys that we expect to be starters, uh, but they are people that you know are not new to the roster. They've already been here at least one season. Uh, so some of those guys are, first off, uh, Musa Berry. He is number 18. He's a six foot two, 190-pound redshirt sophomore. And then we have Easton Messer. He's number eight. He is a five foot nine, 195-pound redshirt sophomore. And we have Javi Button. He's number 19. He's a six foot, 205 pound redshirt junior. Then we have Michael Matheson, number four. He's a five foot, 10, 180 pound graduate player. Um, and I have to mention, he was a 2023 Phil uh, Steel preseason All CUSA third team member. Uh, coming back from injury, high hopes for him. Hope he's healthy. Um, then we also got Willie Taggart Jr. Uh, number 14, he's a six foot one, 178 pound redshirt junior. You know, this time last year, he was on the quarterback position. Um, I think we were talking about him potentially moving to the wide receiver room. And then that became official as the season was starting and we got into fall camp. Uh, so kind of excited to see what he may be able to do if he can work himself onto the field. Then we also have Marvin Sims. He's number 21. He's a five foot 10, 180 pound junior. Then Denzel Ayin, number 82, he's a six foot two, 212 pound senior. Jaleel Walker, number 20, he's a six foot three, 195 pound senior. Jax Cooper, number 23, he's a six foot three, 200 pound redshirt sophomore. Jarvis Hayes, number 26, he's a six foot one, 180 pound redshirt freshman. And then tight ends, uh, also on the roster, we have Trevor Borland, he's number 86, he's a six foot three, 255 pound senior. Noah Myers, number 81. He's six foot five, 235, 230 pounds, and he's a sophomore. Then Elvin Fofana, number 84. He's six foot three. He's 240 pounds and a redshirt senior. And then lastly, Aiden Miller, number 88. He's a six foot three, 225 pounds sophomore. Tyler, that's a lot of bodies. That's a lot of skilled players and quite frankly, a lot of talent uh also on the roster so tell me about some of these guys and what you expect them to contribute this season 
Well, whenever you look at that list, uh, you know, you said a lot of redshirt sophomores, redshirt juniors. Uh, there's only like one, two, three, four, five that I've counted, either seniors or redshirt seniors. So, I mean, that's kind of a youth movement in itself. Musa Berry, you know, he was uh, – he came in. He was 2023 Conference USA all-freshman team. He played uh, – uh, he played in some games, caught nine passes for 145 yards and one touchdown. Uh, Marvin Sims, he played in three games, caught one pass for four yards against FIU. Jax Cooper, local boy from Allen County, uh, played in two games in 2023, mostly on special teams. Um, then you got like ja uh, uh, Javi Bunton. You know, he, he missed last season due to injury. Uh, you know, Easton Messer. Um, I mean, he's probably one of my favorite players on the team. Uh, he was 2023 Conference USA honorable mention for kick return, 2023 Conference USA uh, all-freshman team for kick return, um, 2023. And then he was Conference USA all-freshman team for wide receiver. Uh, you know, he caught 42 passes, 484 yards, and four touchdowns on the season. Uh, and as a kick returner, he also uh, posted 333 yards on 15 returns. Um, I mean, th that guy, Easton, I believe, is going – could uh, work his way to be a great uh, wide receiver. Hopefully, he just sticks with it and he keeps getting better every season. Uh, Elvin Fafona, uh, he played in one game. Aiden Miller, he didn't see any action. Uh, Trevor Borland, uh, he caught one pass last season for four yards. Uh, Noah Meyer, 2023 all-freshman team, he appeared in three games. Uh, mostly, I guess, as a as a blocking tight end. Uh, Michael Matheson, as you said, he was out for the season with injury. Uh, coming back, he's wanting to he's wanting to basically put it out all out there on the field, and hopefully he does. Hopefully he comes in, balls out. Um, I think he could really be a great piece in this offense. Um, I'm excited to see what he can do. Uh, and hopefully he um, he shuts up all the people being like, well, you know, he didn't play last year. So it's kind of like, what have you done for me lately? I believe he can come in and he can – and he will show out. Um, you know, Willie Tag Taggart Jr., he played in four games, mostly on special teams role roles. He was the holder for the field goal kicker, uh, and he, he was there holding the, holding the ball whenever – uh, Lucas hit that game-winning kick against ODU in the bowl game. Uh, I would like to see him uh, kind of – I'd like to see him overcome his dad's shadow, you know. Uh, he came in – his dad is a legend here at WKU. Great player, great coach. Uh, really changed the attitude of WKU football, you know. Um, you'd always see Willie Taggart try to, try to be like, this ain't football, this is bully ball. Uh, knock him in the mouth. Uh, really tried to hype the guys up and, you know, what got us on this trajectory that we're on right now. And uh, if he could come in and hopefully uh, kind of get better in the offseason, prove himself in fall camp, I would like to see him be able to get there out there on the field and make some plays once he gets the ball in his hand. Um, you know, it's, uh, like I said, a lot of these dudes in on the roster um, – you know, maybe caught one, four passes. Uh, Musa Barry, he he really helped out. Easton Messer, I'm I'm excited to see him. Like I said, I'm just uh, I'm all in on him as a uh, as a sub coming in and maybe working his way up there to a starting role um, because you know he's he's quick. He can get lost in the in the shuffle of the defense and he can really just make a play. So. Um, I'm not mad at any of these people on the roster. I think they're all going to help us out. Yeah, I think one interesting thing is that you know, we just talked about the guys we've added to the roster, and we've talked about the depth chart piece. We haven't even talked about the starters that we're expecting to see on the field. And there's a really solid collection of players between the transfers and the guys coming back. I mean, you can make an argument that there's – two, three, four starters of the guys we've already listed. I mean, Easton Messer was a standout uh, all-freshman player last year uh, when we had all the injuries to Dalvin and Malachi and Craig and Blue last year. You know, he stepped in. 
uh, and was a, a target go-to receiver. You know, was not scared of the moment, made a lot of catches. Uh, Mike Matheson coming back from injury, you know, didn't play at all last year, was hurt, um, and just didn't get a chance to get on the field. You know, he's coming back. He's going to be healthy. Um, and if he stays healthy, I mean, that's a – potential number one, you know, target type of guy, a slot position, uh, burner. If he gets the ball, he's going to make a play. And then Musa Berry, we, we saw what he did in a part-time role last year. I mean, that's three guys just from the also returning side of the roster, not even talking about some of the transfers we brought in that could be starters on a lot of teams, not only in this conference, but across the country. So, man, just a lot of talent on this roster. Uh, really excited for what they're going to bring to this team. But let's talk about who those projected starters are for this season. And first is Katie Hutchison. He's number 15. He is a five foot eight, 180 pound redshirt sophomore. And then we have Dalvin Smith. He's number 17. He's a six foot three, 188 pound redshirt senior. And he is on field steals, all CUSA first team. Then we have Keyshawn Johnson, number 13. He's a six foot, 216 pound senior. And then we have River Helms starting at tight end. He's number 87. He's a six foot four, 242 pound redshirt junior. And he is on Phil Steele's All Conference USA fourth team coming into this year. So, Tyler, talk to me about these starters and what your expectations are for them this season. Well, I'm going to start by saying that I think River Helms deserved to be higher than a fourth team. Uh, you know, maybe third. Uh, I think by the end of the season, he'll definitely prove himself to be worthy of a second, maybe first team All Conference USA. Because, uh, I mean, he played great last season. Uh, he played in 12 games, started nine of them, had 22 catches for 289 yards, um, averaged 11, uh, 13.1 yards per catch with three TDs, and his longest uh, reception was 63 yards. I would like to uh, to say that. You know, how I said he was kind of skeptical skeptical about Keyshawn Johnson. Uh, in his career, he played in 33 games. He caught 104, 104 passes um, for 1,487 yards. I would I, – I'd like to uh, uh, correct my, my statement earlier. Uh, Dalvin Smith, he finished 2023. He was the second leading receiver – uh, with 513 yards and six TDs on 50 catches, he averaged uh, 10.3 yards per catch. His longest was 45 yards. Uh, and this boy got that dog in him. You know, when he was playing in the bowl game, uh, he had, uh, I know, two receptions where it was just one, one handy catch and just beautiful, beautiful receptions. Uh, he got there into the end zone. Uh, he had three touchdowns by the end of it. Uh, Katie Hutchinson, he was 2023 Conference USA All Freshman Team for wide receivers. Uh, he was also the last season the Conference USA All Freshman Team for punt return. Uh, he caught 20 passes for 194 yards uh, with two TDs. He averaged 9.7 yards per catch and a long of 45. So I think our I think our wide receiver core, like you said, we we went through the went we went through that whole list of names. Uh, we talked about them, how great they, they were, how good they were, what they showed us. Uh, and then we come into these four pieces. And, uh, I mean, we just keep adding – I'm not going to say it. We keep building on it. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, I mean, the numbers that, that these players, you know, the three returners have put up uh, are, are really great, especially considering that last year – you know, Reed was one to hit Malachi. That was his number one receiver. Everyone in the whole building and every stadium knew it. Um, and you see that these guys can put up those type of numbers when all the attention is put on one guy. I mean, if we was able to spread the ball out to, you know, these four different receivers or a, a multitude of different receivers who come in and fill their spot, uh, I believe we're going to have an amazing wide receiver core. Uh, just as long as they can get them hands up and catch that ball and make it to pay dirt, I, I, I think they will. And I think this, I think this year is going to be great for the uh, quarterback and wide receivers. Yeah, I definitely think um, just talking through the talent that we have on this roster, the depth that we have, 
and the starters we have on this roster, it, it becomes pretty clear why they're the number one unit in Conference USA. And just looking at these starters, I mean, Katie Hutchison, um, I remember coming into last season, you know, we were, I talk, was talking to Steph Brown, uh, former WKU wide receiver. Now he's a wide receiver trainer, works with a lot of college athletes and pros. You know, he said, yeah, that number 15 that we got, he reminds me of another number 15 we used to have, uh, alluding to Nick Norris, who, you know, of himself is an all-time great here at Western, you know, top five in, in receptions and yards and just was an all-time player and was behind Taewon Taylor for a lot of years and was a really good player uh, for his size and his skill set as a slot player. Then Dalvin Smith, I mean, you talked about those two just incredible one-handed catches in the bowl game. Um, you know, this year kind of feels like his opportunity to be that number one wide receiver, the go-to guy. Um, he is a freak athlete. I mean, we've used him in a lot, a lot of gadget plays since he came here to Western. Um, yeah, I really have high expectations for him. Maybe we just need to tell him every game is a bowl game because he really just shows out during the bowl games. Then Keyshawn Johnson, um, just look at his his build, six foot, 216 pounds. I mean, that is a bruiser of a boy, um, big body, uh, not afraid of contact. You know, his nickname is Showtime. You know, if you follow him on any so social media, Keyshawn, Showtime, Johnson, get your popcorn. Um, this boy is ready to put on a show when he puts the pads on. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised to see them – see Western and, and Tyson Helton use him almost in the Malachi Corley type of role, put him in a lot of those screens, those short, um, those short screen passes and let him go make some yards after the catch. He seems like the type and the build and the ability to kind of plug and play, maybe not expect, you know, Malachi Corley results, but he has the talent to be able to be plugged into that position and be successful. And then River Helms, I mean, we were both high on him last year. You know, I think he was one of our uh, breakout players who we expected to have a big year last year. And he did. He had a, a really good year and is getting recognized for that this year. Um, he's a clear-cut starter at the tight end position. Um, you know, like you said, fourth team, uh, all-conference USA. I think by the end of the year, he'll be um, of higher notable status than that when it comes down to stats and I, I look forward to him proving that wrong, but Tyler, let's jump into those four questions for the wide receiver and tight end group. Um, I think this was a layup, but who's going to be the hardest to replace in the wide receiver room? Layup as in, as in blue Smith, right? I mean, that's, that's, your, that's nah, uh, blue Smith. Seriously. Uh, I wish you the best. Um, I, I wish I could have seen more of you on the field. Um, but I'm going to go with Malachi Cord on this one. You know, he, he's one of the all-time greats of wide receiver. And uh, it's going to be – it's going to be hard to fill his shoes, but I think someone will have to do it, and uh, that's my hardest to replace. Yeah, this is easily Malachi Corley. He is the hardest to replace. Um, all-time great. You know, like you said, hopefully he has his name on the side of Houghton Smith Stadium someday. You know, put that jersey, put that 11 up there. Um, glad we got to meet him and talk to him last year. You got his autograph on your jersey. Um, he came and appeared and did an interview on the podcast. Just an all-around great dude. Uh, all Obviously an awesome athlete. Amazing football player. And really excited for him going pro. But he is easily the hardest wide receiver to replace from this room from last year. Who is going to be your breakout player in 2024? I'm going to go with Keyshawn Johnson. Uh, you know, whenever I saw his numbers, I hope that's not who you picked. Uh, <laughs> because, you know, I was going to say based on his numbers from his previous school, uh, you know, I mean, the guy has hands. He can obviously catch the ball and he can make plays. So, um, I'm expecting big things from him, and I think he's going to make a name for himself this season in 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 Hampton Smith State Stadium. Yeah, I think I showed my cards and tipped my hand a little bit too much, <laughs> copying my notes over here that we don't share. But yeah, Keyshawn Johnson is also my breakout player. I just um, the little that I saw of him in spring practice when I got to go to a couple practices and just what I've seen from his Alabama State days, 
um, his build and what I, what I think he can do athletically in this system, you know, getting a lot of balls and being put in position to make plays and be get the ball in space and get yards after the catch. I think, you know, he is someone that real quickly is going to make a name for himself uh, in Conference USA at Western Kentucky and just in college football in general. I think he's going to break onto the scene and be a, a household name at Western pretty quick this upcoming year. So give me Keyshawn Johnson as well. Who is going to be your MVP for the wide receiver room? Well, I hope what you said comes true because this is going to help my MVP out a lot because if we can have two main wide receivers that defense has had to key, key in on, they can't bracket in like they did last year, the previous year, years with Malachi Corley and Jared Stern. Uh, but I'm going to go with Dalvin Smith. Um, that, you know, I went to Barron County. He went to Glasgow. I remember watching him on WBKO uh, doing highlight basketball, you know, dunks and stuff. Um, I think he's going – he ended the season on a really, really uh, high note, and he was on fire. Uh, I can see I can see him continuing that hot streak and uh, being the main play, being one of the main playmakers in the wide receiver room. So he's going to be my MVP this year. Yeah, three for three here on these questions. Uh, also, give me Dalvin Smith. I just think um, you know he's been that role player now for a number of years. Um, he's freakishly athletic. You know, we we've seen that for a number of years, um, and he's just just a really good football player. We we saw that on display at the famous Toastery Bowl um, when he only needed one hand. He could tie one hand behind his back, and he's still probably going to go up and make the catch and burn you down the field. So, you know, Dalvin Smith, he's going to get a true and real opportunity to be wide receiver one, you know, to get a line share of the targets and catches and balls down the field. Um, it's really just going to be all about what he does with the ball does he make the catch and does he make plays after he makes the catch and i I have full confidence in him that he can and that that he will do that i think we'll put him in position to be successful and i think he'll be very successful in that role this upcoming season so also give me dalvin smith as my mvp and now what is your bold prediction for the wide receiver room funny you should ask because uh you know this year our quarterbacks are going to be able to – I don't care how tall the offensive line is, either one of our quarterbacks should be able to see over uh, the offensive line. We already know how one quarterback is with Dalvin Smith, and he, Dalvin is the subject of my hot take. Uh, and I think I think T.J. Finley will probably find him helpful too. Uh, but I think Dalvin Smith is going to transform himself this season. He's going to take his plate to the next level. Uh, and he's going to go on a single season record of uh, 1,469 nice yards, which would put him number three in the single season receiving yards, putting him in between two of Taewon Taylor's. Uh, so Taewon Taylor's going to be bookending him. And uh, Dalvin Smith is going to make history this season. Yeah, I think my bold prediction is that um, wide receiver one, so give me Dalvin if he's my MVP. Give me Dalvin. I think he's going to surpass what Malachi did last year. And now I'll put a little asterisk beside that. Malachi missed most of the USF game and all of the Houston Christian game. He missed two games and still put up 900-ish yards um, and had a really good season and still finished as our all-time leading receptions leader number two in all-time touchdowns here at Western. So had a really good season, but did it in, you know, two less games and virtually didn't play in the bowl game. So call it three less games last year, um, you know, just playing in, what, 10 of the 13 possible games. So um, I think Dalvin is going to come out and, you know, have him a, you know, near 100 receptions, um, over 1,000 yards receiving type of year because I think he is just poised – to be that main option and is going to do the most with it. So give me Dalvin having a big year, um, eclipsing what Malachi did last year, health willing. I think he's going to have a big season. So, man, these uh, position breakdowns now are coming down, you know, nearly to an end. Uh, you know, we've kind of um, booked through them this off season. The season is drawing ever closer. Um, what, we're about five, six weeks away from now from um, – 
you know, going to Alabama, going to Tuscaloosa August 31st and, you know, kicking off the season with an upset at Alabama uh, in prime time, an evening game under the light. So, man, um, this has been a really, really, really fun episode. Uh, just a really fun exercise talking about, you know, every position on this roster. Um, if your name as a football player is listed in the Field Still magazine, or it's listed on the transfer portal tracker pages, or if it's listed on the WKU Sports uh, online football roster, we have said your name, we have said your number, your height and your weight, your class, and at least talked about you briefly and what we expect from you, um, either as a new player, as a returning player, um, or as a potential starter. So, you know, I, I really enjoy and look forward to this part of our podcasting process as we prepare for the football season you know we've said it multiple times it makes us better fans uh we become more knowledgeable of the roster um who we lost who's coming back you know what kind of production who's going to need to step up um you know who the go-to players are going to be and it just really makes us better fans better observers of our football team and hopefully the people listening and tuning in to every position are taking away the same things that we are, you know, seeing that we have a lot of talent on this football team in every single position. Um, you know, all of our positions, you know, except for running back, I think we're highly ranked by Phil Steele. Um, and we talked about the, uh, the running back rankings, why we think they were so low, but there is a lot of talent on this team. It is expected that Liberty is going to be, you know, the clear cut, favorite you know coming into this year media day is just a week away as we're recording now um you know those preseason rankings will come out real soon leading up to next tuesday um you know liberty's going to have all the votes for number one and it's going to be us in jacksonville state two and three you know you can almost guarantee that but we have enough talent and returning talent and known talent on this roster and we've added to what we've lost from last year that we can for sure compete for the conference championship. You know, we're not out of it. You know, this time last year, we were the favorite. You know, we thought with the pieces we had returning that we should be the clear cut favorite on paper to win the conference championship. But that's why you play the games. You know, we don't, uh, on paper, we had a really good football team, uh, but we went through a lot of adversity, a lot of injuries. Um, and just, you know, new names, new new people, new places, new coaches, and just didn't win as many ball games as we would have liked to have won. You know, cl clean slate, we start all over 2024, new football team, some new coaches, some new players, and a lot of returning players and coaches as well. So, you know, we definitely have the team and the ability to make some noise and go out there and compete for a championship. That is the expectation. Um, you know, we want to make a bowl game every year. We want to play for a championship every year. Um, and we definitely have the team and the coach and the players that can go out and do that. And I'm excited that we got to talk about all of them. And I'm looking forward, you know, to this season starting and just, you know, it's like 46 days away at this point. It's really close. It's really close at this point. So I'm really excited for that. Um, you know, obviously this position series breakdown, has been fun you know our next episodes will be the season preview and then we'll get into that week one preview with alabama just shortly after that before that week one matchup so man it's here you know college football the football game is here and now uh the season is here so tyler hit us with your final words and take us on out of here uh yeah you, you was talking about the uh the lowest ranking units on wku you know our defensive line was seven linebackers were six uh i don't feel like they are warranted to be that low um yes we have lost some players and yes we are rebuilding but i mean if there's one thing helton can do and that we've seen it's that he can get players from the portal he can fill holes and he can make those guys play um I'm excited to, to to hear the the pads, you know, hit each other. I'm I'm ready to hear the roar of the crowd in the Houchin Smith Stadium and watch the games uh, that I can't make to on TV or to listen to Randy Lee on the radio. Um, it, this 
like you said, and I'm going to echo you, this position breakdown has been fun. It's been educational, uh, <laughs> you know, doing homework with each other or not with each other, but doing homework and then, you know, comparing notes, comparing the, uh, the four questions that had to be answered at the end of every episode. Uh, it's crazy that our wide receivers were mostly tonight, I think was the most that our, our answers, you know, matched up. But, uh, I can't wait to be back in Houchin Smith Stadium uh, to to see these guys play because I know they're going to try their best. I know they're going to put on a show. Uh, it's going to be a great season. Liberty, I never heard of her. Uh, MTSU, you know, I know there was – what, on Twitter, there was some spat between, like, one of their dudes versus I, – I, it was some someone – and uh, – it wasn't you, was it? Where it was like the guy posted a picture of my pretty little pony or whatever coming out of the tunnel. It was looking like a little furry that needed, that deserves absolutely no respect whatsoever. Um, it's a cute mascot. I'm not going to say it's terrifying. Big Red will at least eat you. He he has done that to, to fans and cheerleaders alike. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm not scared of any player, any team in Conference USA. Uh, because they can be beaten. Um, uh, so I, I don't care who MTSU got as a head coach. You're still trash. You know, this year's not going to be your year. Your quarterback, every time we play, he just keeps throwing interceptions to us. Our defense is his best offensive player. Uh, so I think, uh, you know, I think this is going to be a great year for WK football. Uh, I'm, I, I'm ready to play college football 25 uh, i didn't get the pre-order edition so i gotta wait a little bit longer but uh i mean this this is fun uh phil still our bible uh wkusports.com very helpful as always and uh i think it's awesome that you know every player that commits their 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 name or their sales to this university gets talked about uh and gets shown at least for some respect um, for what they what they put themselves and what they put their body through, because football tough sport, you know, especially college football. They're beat up, and they still get up every morning ready to do it again. So, with that said, I will say, let's go tops. Get ready to play some football. Can't wait to to be able to watch it. Hopefully, I'll be able to go down to Alabama. Uh, hopefully, our child our child's coming soon. So. It's looking like I may be able to because I may be able to get away for a little bit. Uh, and I'll be able to make my first trip down to Tuscaloosa. Uh, I'm excited about that. Uh, can't wait to see what – can't wait to be there as we beat Alabama. I'm calling it. Um, you know, I'm going to put on them red red lenses uh, of my glasses and just, and just wear the hell out of them. Uh, but with that, I'll say, Moff, who has it better than us, bro? Nobody, buddy. You always know it. You know. Go Tops. Go Tops, y'all. Later, guys. See you.